నమస్కారం ఉన్న స్థితి నుంచి ఉన్నత స్థితికి తీసుకువెళ్ళడానికి గురుకృప చాలా అవసరం అలాంటి సద్గురువుని వెతుక్కుంటూ ఆలెక్స్ తన మాతృదేశమైన నెదర్లాండ్స్ని వదిలి సరిహద్దులు దాటి మన వేద భూమిలోకి అడుగు పెట్టారు ఆయన అత్యాధునిక కార్యక్రమాలని ఎలా మొదలు పెట్టారు ఏంటి అన్నది ఆయన మాటల్లోనే తెలుసుకుందాం ఓం శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ హరి ఓం ఓం గణానాంత్వా గణపతి గుం హవామహే కవింక వీణాముపమ్రవస్తమం జ్యేష్ఠరాజం బ్రహ్మణ బ్రహ్మణస్పత ఆన శృణ్వన్నూతిభిస్సీదసాదనం శ్రీమహాగణపతయే నమ సరస్వతి నమస్తుభ్యం వరదే కామూపి విద్యారంభం కరిష్యామి సిద్ధిర్భవతు మే సదా నమస్తే శారదాదేవి కాశ్మీర్ పురవాస్వామహం ప్రాథయే దేవి విద్యా బుద్ధిచ దేహి మే గురుర్బ్రహ్మ గురుర్విష్ణుర్గురుర్దేవో మహేశ్వర గురు సాక్షాత్ పరం బ్రహ్మ తస్మై శ్రీగురవే నమ I would say that it started from my childhood in a way that uh, the way my parents uh, raised me my brother like uh, already uh, from my young childhood sometimes at home we used to meditate or uh, you know we used to they raised us as vegetarian which is quite unique that time in in the Netherlands sometimes whenever i used to get some books i would read about it but uh, it felt like something was missing uh, i met uh, gurudev shri shri ravi shankar ji in the netherlands he had come for a public program in amsterdam in the capital uh, 1000 people were there and i got to know about the program through my mother she heard about it so we went there and uh, it was a public talk there was a guided meditation uh, an interaction with him and when i uh, i listened to the things he was saying uh, i experienced the guided meditation there then i knew that yeah this is what i was looking for and this is the person i was looking for so that is when i started doing some of the art of living programs and uh, again i used to whenever i used to have a chance i used to go and meet uh, shri shri ravi shankar ji in when he used to come to germany or uh, you know nearby places and uh, after a few years i became a volunteer like i started organizing some of the art of living programs in my university uh, i decided i would like to become a teacher of these programs i visited there uh, for the first time that was when i was uh, 19 years old Uh, after high school uh, that was the first time i experienced uh, some of the yagyas the pujas also we, every monday we have rudra bishek rudra puja uh, we have a veda pachala there so we have uh, this programs navratri time there were big homas chandi homa was there uh, so seeing that experiencing that for me was something very uh, beautiful very magical like i remember the first time i attended the rudra bisheka in the ashram they chant the pandits will chant the rudram and i saw people are sitting with their eyes closed they are meditating so uh, after some time i also closed my eyes and for half an hour i don't know where i went but it was a very beautiful very peaceful state so when the bhajan started at the end uh, i realized that you know i had such a deep meditation uh, and i was amazed that you know the mantras have such an effect on our mind and our consciousness because you know if you play any other music uh, be it you know indian or western or you no know, you can play michael jackson close your eyes listen to it but nothing will happen but the vedic chanting anybody like we have people coming from all over the world from russia from china from mongolia from america from europe and all have the same experience they might not understand sanskrit they might not understand the language they might not even understand what's happening there in the yagya or in the puja but they also when they close their eyes when they listen to the mantras uh, they go into the deep state of meditation and they have that experience and i think that is the the beauty and the power also of many of these vedic practices the the traditions which we find uh, in sanatana dharma is that it is something which is relevant for everybody and it is based on experience you know if you see even in the upanishads it all starts with a question question you know the rishis they used to ask this okay let me find out they used to say okay you want to learn about uh, meditation you want to learn about 
Ya guys, okay, you come, you sit, you experience. No? Find out for yourself. And I think in today's modern world, that is also why more and more people, uh, they find inspiration in these practices because it is practical, it's relevant for everybody. No? Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be healthy. And it comes from that scientific point of view that you say, okay, let me experience for myself how this is relevant in my life, uh, how it is for me. And that really appealed to me also. How important is a guru in one's life? Guru, I, from my experience and even from what I've read in the scriptures also, you know, like in Hindi, for example, they say, Guru, guru Bina Gati Nihi. Like without a guru, you cannot really progress. Uh, even if you see, you know, the word anath, like now we usually refer to uh, orphans, you know, people who don't have parents as anath. Like they say, no, anath bacche hai. But in Sanskrit, the way the word came about was, it was not used for orphans. It was not used for those who don't have parents. They said those who don't have a guru, who don't have a master, they were called anath. Isli anath, no? who doesn't have a, a guru. So if you see in life, we do so many things. People want to be successful. They want to have a nice job, a nice family. But behind that, the idea is there is because those things will give me happiness. Those things will give me fulfillment. If we do not find happiness, if we don't find peace of mind, then what is the point? No, that's what we see many places in the world now. Why people, depression is increasing is because they thought when we have all the comforts, we'll be happy. If you see in Europe also. Then people, when they sit at home, they see everything is there, but they don't have peace of mind. They become depressed because something is missing and they don't know where to look for it. And this is not a new thing. Even in the ancient days, people used to wonder. And especially here, of course, where that scientific, that sincere seeker was there. No, the rishis they used to ask, okay, what is the point of life? What is the purpose? Why have we come here and where will we find that fulfillment? So a guru is one who can help you reach that goal of whether you call it enlightenment, whether you call it uh, nirvana, whether you call it, uh, you know, peace of mind, self-realization, that realizing your true nature, which is joy, which is love, which is enthusiasm. And there are so many books there are so many scriptures, there are so many teachers, but there are very few real gurus. No? And the difference is that you can say a guru is like a, uh, like a road map. No? You have a book, say you want to go from Vishakapatnam to Hyderabad. So someone has given you a book which gives you the route. They say, okay, you have to go straight here for so many kilometers, take a right. When you see this temple, you take a left. But then what happens is you go there, but if somehow you miss you miss a turn. Accidentally, you know, you have taken a right where you were supposed to take a left or maybe the temple which used to be there now uh, is of a different color. A school which used to be there now has become a hospital. No? So then it's very easy to get lost. You are not sure also, did I take the right road? Am I going in the right direction? No? But if someone is sitting next to you in the car, if they're saying, okay, yes, you have to go straight here. Yes, you have to take a right here. Yes, this is the right road. You reach much, much easier, much faster, and the journey is much more enjoyable. What are the reasons for you to choose India as your destination? I'm not sure if we can call India a destination, because even now I travel a lot. Uh, the last five years, I'm taking care of most of our activities in the northeastern region of India. But also I go to Bhutan for programs, I've been to Nepal for programs. Uh, I have conducted programs in Sri Lanka, uh, in parts of Europe. Then uh, I'll be going now to a uh, few countries like uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, to Indonesia. But yes, because I wanted to learn about the Vedic traditions, uh, I have learned uh, some of the Vedic chanting, the pujas, the yagyas. I wanted to go deeper into this knowledge of Sanatana Dharma. So then you have to come to India. No? It is something which is not just because you can say, uh, because our, my guru, his main ashram is here. So many saints have come from India, but it is part and parcel of the whole uh, atmosphere. If you see, you go to any village, still many of these values are alive. Many of these traditions are alive. So that way, yes. No? I feel if you want to go deeper into this spiritual knowledge, into this uh, Vedic traditions, you have to come to India. How satisfied were you when you found the right Guru? 
for me, it was something which had been lingering there, whether consciously or unconsciously, that yes, I was looking for something. Like many people still feel that, you know, something is missing in life. We are looking for something. So when I met uh, my guru, Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji, when I heard him speak, when I experienced the meditation, when I had a chance to meet him personally, look him into the eyes, somehow inside, from deep inside, I felt that yes, you know, this, I have come home. This is the person I was looking for. And uh, that has never changed. I tell you, it's a very uh, precious experience and I feel very grateful to be able to live a life where there is no doubt that I am on the right path. There is no uh, doubt that I still should be looking for something else. Uh, to know that, okay, I'm in the right place and I'm doing what I would like to do, what I would love to do and uh, how I can contribute best, make this life most useful. That gives a lot of fulfillment and uh, even going to difficult places where I might not be so comfortable physically, it gives that strength and enthusiasm to do what is needed. Once you started following your Guru, what were the changes you observed in your life? There are so many things. Uh, but like I said, one is a, a confidence deep inside that you know, not just as a concept, but on an experiential level, that I am not alone. You know, There is some person or some higher power, someone with me. At the same time, you know, for this... I mean, it's a personal experience, but my experience meeting him was for the first time seeing someone who has no judgment at all. No? If you see like in the eyes of a small child, if you see there is no judgment. That's why even a, you know, a big businessman, he can be crazy with a baby because the child will not judge him. So seeing that, yes, someone who has accepted you so totally, who uh, loves you so unconditionally and... Uh, who will always be there, however many mistakes you might make, whatever you might do. Uh, who is there to guide at the same time, to inspire also. Uh, that is something very precious and I've seen it helps me in all spheres of my life. Because challenges will come. You know, whether you're studying, whether you're working, whether you're doing some project. So problems, challenges are part of life. But then having a guru, I have experienced, gives you the the strength, the enthusiasm and the confidence to go through these things with a smile. As a good student, what were the things you followed to get the blessings of your Guru? I think the beauty of having a real Guru is that his blessings are unconditional. You know? Of course, you know, it is like once he gave the example that it's like if you want to uh, receive something, you have a cup. So you have to keep your cup up. If you keep your cup upside down, however much he will pour, it will not go inside. So yes, to some extent, we have to, from our side, uh, increase our, you know, that patrata, that ability to uh, follow what he teaches to do. So that, of course, that discipline, that shraddha is what we can give from our side. But otherwise, from what I have seen and experienced also, that from the side of the guru, that love, that blessing is unconditional. So it's up to us how much do we want to take, how sincerely we want to follow what he teaches. And then accordingly that much we'll be able to receive. After getting blessings from your Guru, what were your feelings? I mean, actually for me, finding a Guru when I realized that, yes, okay, I have a master. That itself, I think, was the biggest blessing for me. There are so many things... You know, small, small things, but uh, even today I feel very grateful to uh, have a living master to guide me, to inspire me, and to have a someone to, you know, as a role model, you can say, to show you what is possible. That it's possible to live a life in service of others, happily, with that fulfillment, to share that with people, to make a difference, and uh, at the same time, go deep within. Are there any unforgettable incidents in your life, in your journey, in attaining spirituality? There are quite a few. Um, one thing which comes to mind, for example, is uh, after you know, doing some of the courses, like I said, the first time I had come to our uh, ashram in Bangalore for the first time, 
I came for an advanced meditation program. I stayed there for a few, uh, you know, few weeks. And uh, at that time, I felt that, uh, you know, I would like to become an art of living teacher also. So I thought I should ask, you know, uh, Shishira Vishankarji. So after the program, there was a, an opportunity to meet him. He was meeting the whole group and anybody who wanted could ask a personal question. So he was, we made a line. So he was going from person to person. And when he was in front of me, so first I asked him that, you know, I would like to become a teacher. Do you also think it's a good idea? So he said, yes, yes, do it. And then suddenly one more question came into my mind. And I asked him, I said, you know, Guruji, when I remember you, when I think of you or when I thank you, whether I am at home or somewhere else, uh, do you know? Like, does it reach? You know, maybe from my side, I feel grateful. But how do we know we reach? Like many people might be asking that question. No, OK, I go to temple, I pray, but does it reach? You know, is someone listening? Really? So somehow that question came up and I asked him, I said, so Gurudev, do you know? And he just looked at me, he smiled and he said, yes. So I was very happy. Then he went to the next person and then I was thinking, but how do I really know? You know, it's easy to say that, okay, yes, I know, but how can we be sure? Maybe he's just saying that. But then of course, how to find out he had already gone ahead and, but then what happens is a few weeks later, uh, he was again going to travel abroad. And uh, it was the evening we had a satsang. I, you know, we were singing bhajans. He was going to share some knowledge. And he was sitting on the stage on the sofa. And many people were coming on the stage to take his blessings before he was leaving. He was going to be gone for a f one or two months. And I knew that, okay, in a few days I'm also going back to Europe. So I might not see him for a long time. So I felt like going there to just thank him. To share that you know, I had such a wonderful time there uh, in the ashram. But then so much of crowd. And you know, sometimes, you know, here... In India especially, uh, a queue is not always a queue. It's a very dynamic phenomenon. So there are so many people, one going on top of the other. and So I did not feel like going in between the crowd. So I was sitting, There was it's a big uh, meditation hall we have. So I was sitting a little far away. So I thought, okay, I'll just mentally, I'll thank him. So I closed my eyes and just in my mind, I said, you know, thank you for this wonderful time. And I felt so grateful. And when I opened my eyes and I looked at the stage, he was talking to a person sitting in front of him. He suddenly looked up and he folded his hand like this. And I thought, okay, maybe some you know, VIP has come. So I was looking behind, you know, is someone is coming from behind or not? And I didn't see anybody. And again, I looked at him and then he, I saw that he's looking at me. And I was so surprised and he smiled. He looked at me and I did like this. And then he smiled again. And then again, he looked at the person in front and he continued his conversation. So for me, it was a shock and I didn't know. And then suddenly I remembered that few weeks back, I had asked him that, you know, Gurudev, if I remember you, if I thank you, does it reach, you know, do you know? So these are, of course, personal experiences, but I've seen with myself and many of my friends also that it's like he gives a small glimpse. He will never say that, yes, yes, you know, I know. And But once someone asked him, he said, you know, Gurudev, you have so many millions of devotees all over the world, people you know, who feel so close to you, who consider you as their guru. Uh, and many of them have this experience that when they really need some help, it is given, you know, when they really need something. And even to the extent that with him also I've seen, suddenly he might say, okay, call this person out of the blue. And the person is in need of something or the person was remembering him or whatever. So then he said, you know, it's not that guru knows all the time what everybody is doing. But if someone needs it, if you need some help or something is there. It's like someone pulling one hair on your head. See, we have so many hairs, we don't know how many hairs are there. We cannot count also. So he said the same way, I know when anything is there, he knows and we can wonder about it. Uh, in your journey in, attain in attaining spirituality, who were the people who supported you and stood by you? I think... I was very fortunate in a way that I've never really had any people uh, object to it or, you know, like sometimes I know a person might be very interested in spirituality, but people at home or uh, in the family are not so interested or not so supportive. Uh, like I said, for me, from childhood itself, to some extent, it was there. The way my parents raised me, my parents were also, uh, you can say, spiritually inclined. Uh, so even when I expressed that desire to go to India, initially I thought it would be for one or two years. But to dedicate myself to, you know, serving society and uh, going deeper into this knowledge instead of just your daily nine to five job, uh, they in no way objected. No, they were 
uh, they gave me all that freedom. They were very supportive. You must have come across many saints and gurus. Can you just tell us something about them? I think the beauty is no, that, like what uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji also, uh, you know, has mentioned at different times, and even we see in the scriptures that guru is not just a person, you know. It is a tattva, it's a presence. So, yes, of course, those people we call guru are those where we see those qualities where, uh, you know, it becomes like a, like a window. Through the window, you can see the sky. And what my experience is meeting with different saints, different monks, uh, different people, you will find the same flavor, the same presence in all those different people. And I think that is also the beauty and the depth of the Vedic traditions of Sanatana Dharma where they say, that they say Shri Guru Bhyonamaha, we honor all the gurus. It is not just that, okay, my guru. That tradition of knowledge, that guru parampara, and recognizing that that one divinity, that one consciousness, can be there in so many forms. You know, Even the concept of Ishtadevata. It's so beautiful that you say, yes, there is one divinity, but you can honor it in any way you want, any way that you feel comfortable. So that's a very profound and a very advanced uh, concept I feel and that is also what makes the makes it so relevant even today in this journey you must have had a lot of twists and turns any hard times challenges are definitely there that also comes with uh, you know taking responsibility if you say okay I'm just going to sit at home I'm going to meditate you might not get so many challenges but when you say yes I also want to serve I want to give back something to society, then of course challenges come. Like good example, they say, you know, if you open a store with uh, to sell milk, you might have to do a lot of work to get customers. But if you open a liquor store, that line will come on its own. Mm -hmm. So, and especially the areas where I work, uh, the northeastern region, like I've been working in areas where militants are there, you know, militancy problem is there, very remote areas where there might not be electricity, there might be, you know, very basic facilities. So. To work in those places, of course, is a challenge. But then when you see that we're able to make a difference, contribute something, that fulfillment will make it easy to bear all these other things. Any message for our viewers? What I would like to share, uh, and especially for the youth, is that, you know, in life, we look for happiness, we look for peace of mind in so many things. Real peace of mind you can only find within. You know? So taking a little bit of time to uh, go a little deeper into spirituality, meditation, find out that okay, that peace, that joy which we experience in between where it's actually coming from, that will lead you to that True fulfillment in life. No? Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Om Ganana Antva Ganapati Gum Hava Mahe Kavinka Veena Mupamashravastamam Jeshta Rajam Brahmharnam Brahmharnaspata Anashrinvan Nuti Bhisida Sadhanam Shri Maha Ganapata Yena Maha Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kama Rupini Vityarambham Karishami Siddhir Bhavatume Sada Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmi Rapuravas Tvamaham Pratha Ye Devi Vitya Buddhin Chadehime Gurur Brahma Gurur Vishnur Gurur Devo Maheshvaraha Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Thank you Guruji. Manu Shri Poorna Chaitanya Gari Chepin Sambhashna Vinnamu Krushi Unde Manshul Drushla Avataru Andan Ki Idok Nidarsanam Ayan Chepin Maatlini Manu Andhra Aacharinchi Manu Bharat Desa Sanatha Dharmani Kaapadukundam Thank you